Recall that the court in the Sweet Home case upheld the agency interpretation of the word take as it occurs in the Endangered Species Act. But the court declared that it did not need to address the question whether the statute compelled the agency's interpretation. It was sufficient that the statute did not compel the logging company's reading and that the agency reading was reasonable. In other words, the court decided the case at step two, thus leaving open the question whether the agency retained the flexibility that the EPA kept in Chevron to revise the interpretation. The court returned to this aspect of the Chevron doctrine in the Brand X case. In Brand X, the agency, the FCC, had changed its interpretation of the statutory term telecommunications service. In that respect, Brand X is like Chevron itself, in which the EPA had changed its interpretation of the term stationary source in the Clean Air Act. But in Brand X, there was a twist. The FCC had prevailed in the DC Circuit in an earlier challenge to its former interpretation of the statute. Now in Brand X, the FCC was asking the court to allow it to depart from a statutory reading that the Court of Appeals had already upheld. Was the FCC now to be heard to argue that it was free to ignore the interpretation that the DC Circuit had upheld? Justice Thomas, writing for the court in Brand X, explained that it was. Chevron teaches that a court's opinion as to the best reading of an ambiguous statute an agency is charged with administering is not authoritative. The D.C. Circuit may have done what the Supreme Court itself had done in Sweet Home. It may have upheld the agency reading at step two. Before a judicial construction of a statute may trump an agency's, the court must hold that the statute unambiguously requires the court's construction. The D.C. Circuit had not said that. This meant that the agency was free to adopt a different interpretation so long as it stayed within the reasonable range. After all, that is what the EPA had done in Chevron. Justice Gorsuch, before his elevation to the Supreme Court, complained that Brand X gave agencies the power to overrule federal courts on questions of law. Under Brand X's terms, he wrote, courts are required to overrule their own declarations about the meaning of existing law in favor of interpretations dictated by executive agencies. Judge Gorsuch mistakenly ignores the distinction between a court's step one declaration that a statute unambiguously has a precise meaning, and a court's step two declaration that an agency's interpretation is reasonable. Neither kind of declaration allows agencies to dictate. Brand X follows straightforwardly from Chevron and Sweet Home, but that very fact exposes something troubling about Chevron itself. Suppose that the traditional tools of statutory interpretation do not determine a precise meaning at Chevron Step 1. Text, context, purpose, the canons of construction, and if you like, their legislative history fail to settle the interpretive issue. This means there is a permissible range of alternative meanings available, and the court's analysis proceeds to Step 2. The agency is free to adopt either of two pretty good readings. The agency is not free to adopt an off-the-wall or really bad reading. The agency is not even compelled to adopt a pretty darn good reading in preference to one that is merely pretty good. But suppose there is a best reading. How can an agency be free to ignore a reading that the court perceives to be the best among the reasonable alternatives. To leave the choice with the agency seems as though it gives the agency rather than the judicial branch the power to declare what the law is. As the late Ronald Dworkin insisted, the law simply is 
the best constructive interpretation of the legal materials. If that's what the law is, how could it not derogate from the judicial branch to allow the agency to ignore it? Or, leaving Dworkin aside, put the problem this way. Query. How can it be reasonable for an agency to prefer less than the best reading? The puzzle dissolves when we, re when we recall that Congress is the lawmaker. Because Congress writes the law, the issue is whether Congress intended the agency's notion of what is best, within a reasonable range, to control, rather than the court's notion of what is best, even if it happens to be the best. If there is an issue here, it is whether the doctrine of separation of powers can tolerate congressional legislation that gives agencies this kind of decision-making authority. We will come back to this. Bear in mind that an agency's exercise of interpretive discretion within the range of reasonable alternative readings is not unbounded. Consider this. An agency switches back and forth between permissible interpretations by coin toss every six months. Something is not right. Does the bare fact that the agency settled on an interpretation within the reasonable range automatically make its action not arbitrary and capricious? It does not. The fact that an agency has acted to choose a reasonable interpretation does not preclude a reviewing court's inquiring whether the adoption or change of interpretations is arbitrary or capricious or capricious. As Justice Thomas explains, agency inconsistency is not a basis for declining to analyze the agency's interpretation under the Chevron framework. Unexplained inconsistency is, at most, a reason for holding an interpretation to be an arbitrary and capricious change. <laughs>